Welcome back. So now we're ready to simulate the inverted pendulum on a cart system. Uh, and we're ready to stabilize it using LQR feedback. And we're also going to estimate the full state using a Kalman filter. OK, so I'm going to do this in, in stages. And I'm also going to do this using Simulink. So I want to kind of draw out a few things for you. So basically, what we're going to do is we're going to take our real system. This is whatever our system. OK, and our system is going to be this um, inverted pendulum on a cart. So this is actually easier to simulate the full nonlinear system in Simulink uh, than it is to write a script. So I'm just going to simulate the whole system. Uh, the idea is that we're going to have some input u, and we're going to have some output um, x or y or whatever. So in the first case, Let's just say that I have a measurement of the full state x. And what am I going to do with that? Well, I'm going to pull that into some LQR regulator, which is minus kx. OK, so that's what this block is going to do. And we know that we can stabilize the inverted pendulum on a cart just using an LQR regulator. Okay? So in a minute, what we're going to do is we're going to drop this assumption that we have full access to the full state x. And we're going to put a Kalman filter estimator block in here. But for now, let's just make sure we can do the linear quadratic regulator. Um, and remember, what we're going to be stabilizing about is the position um, 0, 0, pi, 0. Okay, so that's x x dot, theta, theta dot. Um, here, x is the, the position of the cart. This is my vector x, which is all of, all of these states in a vector. Um, OK, so I'm just going to show you. So first things first, um, I have my code here that builds a, b, q, r, and my, common uh, sorry, my LQR gain matrix. I'm just going to run this, because I have to load this all into memory. Okay. And then what I do is I have this nice uh, Simulink system that I built. Um, and you can download this and play around with it. I'm not going to explain every single piece. But basically, I have this block here, cart pend sim. And what this is, is this is basically some C code that simulates the right-hand side, the full nonlinear dynamics of this system. So it's the four ODEs we had before. Um, so it takes in u and it outputs the full state. So I'm really measuring everything. And I'm going to give that to some oscilloscope. So we're going to be able to plot the four, uh, the four states in time. And then what I do is I essentially split that vector into its four components. So x, x dot, theta, theta dot. And I'm going to do a couple of things. So first thing, I have to take theta minus pi, because remember, the full nonlinear system in the pendulum up position, theta is equal to pi. But my, calm, my, my LQR regulator is linearized about that up position. So I need to look in, in local coordinates, theta minus pi. Because if I'm a little bit to the right or the left, I want that to measure as like 0.1 or minus 0.1, not pi plus 0.1 or pi minus 0.1. So I have, to, I have to kind of subtract off the equilibrium from my, my state of the nonlinear system. And then what I'm going to do is I have this step here. This is kind of cool. So I have this step. Let me just open it. I have a step at time 10 from 0 to 1. And so what that's going to do is that's going to set my equilibrium reference condition for the cart position x. Basically, what this is going to say is that this is going to go to 1 at t equals 10. Okay, So the system is going to start with the pendulum up at x equals 0 at time 0. And then at time 10, it's going to say, well, actually, I want to be at position x equals 1. And so the controller is going to have to walk the system over to x equals 1 at time 10. And then here, it's a little hard to see, but in Simulink, this is literally just um, I'm, I'm multiplying minus k times the output here, which is uh, my full state x minus the equilibrium. Okay, I'm, that's all that this stuff in the middle is doing. This is just, uh, let me just annotate this really quickly. All of this stuff here is just uh, x minus the equilibrium. 
Okay, that's all that this is doing. And I want my equilibrium to change from x equals 0 to x equals 1, the cart position, at time 10. So I want to show that this is actually moving the system over. Okay, pretty simple. I've got some nonlinear dynamics. I measure the full state. I subtract off the nominal equilibrium position. I run it through my LQR gain matrix, minus kx. That's all this is doing. And I feed that back as the input to my system. Okay, and if nothing went wrong, um, I should be able to run this. So here I had to compile this, this code. So you might want to check that your compiler runs. Uh, but all I have to do is hit go. And it simulates, it initializes, it's running, and it's done. So now I can open my scope, my oscilloscope. It's a little hard to see, um, but basically what we have here are the four variables in time. And I'm just going to kind of infer what I think these variables are doing. So this red variable must be theta because it's hanging out around pi. Okay. At time 10, remember, my, I made my position walk from 0 to 1. So that's this yellow curve here. At time 10, my controller walks my system over to position 1. And there's a little dip in theta and a little bit of theta dot and x dot, right? So what, essentially what's happening is when it walks over, it probably kicks theta a little bit, maybe in this direction, and then walks over and stabilizes. Okay, so we've already written the script that implements this LQR controller. I'm just showing you that it's possible to do in Simulink. Okay, that's all this is showing is that in Simulink, I get the same stabilization of the theta equals pi, and I'm able to walk my system over, let's say, from cart position 0 to cart position 1. Really simple. Okay, so that's all that this is doing. So now what we're going to do is we're going to assume, let's, let's not assume that we measure all of x. Let's assume that we actually measure, um, we only measure some limited measurements y. And so I'm going to do the following. I'm going to say, well, okay, I want to know what the truth is. So I'm going to have x true coming off of this thing. But then what I'm going to do is I'm going to essentially, I'm just going to pull up the whole Simulink window here. So essentially what I'm going to do is I'm only going to measure CY. Okay, so I'm going to measure, um, this is going to be a little hard to, to write and fit. Okay, I'm going to measure Y equals CX. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to pipe this into my Kalman filter, my big Kalman filter. Okay, so this is Y. And remember my Kalman filter needs to know U you. And then the output of my Kalman filter is an estimate of the true full state x hat, which then goes into my LQR regulator. Okay, so this is this whole procedure is the the linear quadratic Gaussian. Okay, this is called LQG linear quadratic Gaussian. Um, it basically combines the linear quadratic regulator and the Kalman filter uh, for systems that have a uh, an output y that's not the full state. So remember, my LQR needs the full state, but if I'm only measuring y and I'm not measuring my full state, I have to estimate x, and then I plug it into LQR. So this is the Simulink code that does basically uh, the same thing, and I'm just going to walk you through it, okay? So this hasn't modified much um, over my LQR code. I still have the same nonlinear dynamics. I still have the same truth measurement coming out. But here, this is my y equals c times x. So I'm only measuring, and let's actually make sure that this is, yeah. So the gain matrix here, I don't know if you can see it, but it says c. So the matrix here is c times x, so the output is y. OK, this block here is my Kalman filter. So if I double click it, you see that the A matrix is my Kalman filter dot A matrix. The B matrix is my Kalman filter dot B, Kalman filter dot C, Kalman filter dot D. So in the, in the MATLAB window up here, I'm basically going to run all of this code that builds my Kalman filter. Okay, so I'm going to define a C matrix, a D matrix, and disturbance and noise covariances. I'm going to build uh, my Kalman filter gain using either the LQE or LQR command. 
And then I'm going to actually build a linear system called syscallmanfilter that is this dynamical system estimator. So I'm going to run all this code. Now in memory, there's this system called syscallmanfilter. And if I type it in here, syskf is this big, um, let's see if I can lift this. Um, it's this big Kalman filter system. Okay, so it has an A matrix, a B matrix, a C matrix, and so on and so forth. And then if I type syskf.a, it just pulls out the A matrix. Same with dot B, dot C, and so on and so forth. Okay? So essentially what I'm doing is I'm taking this big block here, this Kalman filter block, and I'm pretty sure if I wanted to, I could actually name it. Um, I could call this Kalman filter, okay? And what I'm doing is I'm just defining this, the A, B, C, and D matrices of that system are syskf, my Kalman filter. Okay. Okay, and then all of this stuff looks a little weird, um, but this is just doing the same thing. I'm subtracting off the equilibrium position, and I'm manually putting in a step so I want to walk the cart over from position 0 to position 1 at time 10. Okay, So that's just what we were doing before. This is just uh, subtracting out the equilibrium position. Uh, and then is there anything else? I think that's it. Uh, then I run it through my, so I get an estimate of my full state x hat. That goes into my LQR, and then that feeds back and stabilizes my system. Okay, So let's try to run this ran super fast. I double click my scope. And notice again, almost exactly the same response. I have my, my system is stabilized in the vertical up position because this uh, theta is hanging out around pi. The yellow curve, which is my x position of my, my cart, is walking from x equals 0 to x equals 1 at time 10. And notice that this is all working purely based on a measurement only of the yellow signal. So all I'm measuring is this yellow cart position and how I'm kicking the system. And I'm estimating using this Kalman filter theta x, x dot, and theta dot. Okay, so this is really cool that we're able to build up this estimator. And when we build this estimator, we're able to combine it with LQR to stabilize an unstable system. Okay, so that's the whole idea behind LQG, this uh, full, th sorry, this sensor-based feedback uh, of a, an unstable system. Now, if you played around with this a little more, you'd find that if I added a lot of noise to this measurement, or if I added a lot of disturbances to the system, it's actually a lot more sensitive when I combine these two. Okay, so the combined system is more sensitive to noise and it's more sensitive to disturbances. And this is a general issue with these linear quadratic uh, Gaussian controllers, is that they can be kind of non-robust to noise, to disturbances. And so that's something we'll talk about later. But I just wanted you to see how these pieces combine. OK, thank you.